And Mahatma Gandhi used to say, to believe in something and not practice it is a crime. Mm. And so I hit my fingers in the dirt half the year and actually work with communities. Right now, mostly in Afghanistan. Well, the International Institute for the Inclusive Museum is a collaboration of knowledge communities dealing with the World Culture Forum, the Inclusive Museum Knowledge Community, the Culture, Social, Economic and Environmental Sustainability Knowledge Community, Climate Change Knowledge Community, and Intangible Heritage Knowledge Community. So there's nearly over a million people who engage with these knowledge communities through the Institute. It's a collaboration. Uh, for instance, administratively, all the knowledge communities are uh, hosted and sponsored by the Common Ground Publishing from uh, Champaign, Urbana in the United States. Uh, a lot of the digital content is generated from Taiwan, India. The advisory mechanisms are chaired from Paris, from International Council of Museums. And wherever I am, the executive directory, so leadership is, you know, very mobile. Could be right today from Stockholm, tomorrow from Ningpo, Ningpo in China. But what we've done is we've actually found that a lot of knowledge is project managed by people who already control the technologies. So you have gatekeepers, okay. you know, like, could be professors, could be committee chair people. So those committees, those, those departments usually decide who's going to speak, whose content is going to be there. And, uh, and I found that in 2004, when Theo van Gogh was murdered in Amsterdam, outside the Tropen Museum, the Dutch went berserk in the sense that they didn't really understand what they did wrong when they're dealing with multiculturalism. And uh, that's because largely all the generous and very worthwhile projects were largely uh, driven by goodwill and people meant well. But goodwill and meaning well doesn't necessarily mean integration. I'm a strong advocate for integration of all peoples, not just migrants, but our next generation, whether it's Sweden, Netherlands, Australia, is so alienated, uh, even if they're Caucasian, they're alienated. How do we reintegrate them? So integration is actually about inclusion and all of us coming together, irrespective of our race, ethnicity, age, sexual orientation, gender, faith, economic status, it doesn't matter. But how do museums become civic spaces for all of us? What is the new role of museums in 21st century as a civic space that brings people together? through this process of integration that we want to achieve in our societies. And that's what the Institute for Inclusive Museum does, is facilitate. Can you give us some examples? How do you work uh, to, to concretize this? Like, i uh, give you the example. This year in April, uh, we had the International Knowledge Community meeting in Copenhagen at the National Art Gallery. Uh, it was uh, partly supported by Common Ground Publishing from the United States. Nearly two-thirds was sponsored by them, one-third by the Danish Agency for Culture through the National Art Gallery. But what we did was the theme in Denmark right now is museums and active citizenship. So we did a learning day at Aachen for 32 museum people in Denmark from you know, 20 different museums. Out of that came the content and the themes. And then we opened it up on the web. We used all kinds of social media. So anybody could apply, upload an abstract and their bio, which are then peer reviewed and they participate. The result is we had people from 47 countries participating. The largest number, according to some museum people, largest number of international museum professionals coming together for a research conference in Denmark for the first time. But we had equal number of Danish people participating, researchers. So it was a real cultural exchange. It was facilitated largely in the digital domain. Although there's a face-to-face -face conference, the follow-up is digitally accessible in terms of the research articles, books, and everything that's come out of it. And the abstracts and everything is available to download. So that, that's how the Institute works. But the most important thing is that people actually decide who is going to 
participate. It's not us, it's not me, it's not my committee. Uh, it's the peer group in the digital domain. They evaluate, they assess, they encourage, you know, they nominate. And this is where we use digital do the digital domain for promoting cultural democracy when we, our aspiration is to promote the inclusive museum, the concept of the inclusive museum for all peoples. So it's a democracy, democracy to have these platforms or... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very important because uh, as we create new, new knowledge, a lot of money is being spent. Mm -hmm. But the question is, as we create that knowledge, where is the ownership, who are the stakeholders, how is it, you know, shared knowledge, where is the shared authority of that knowledge? I mean, the kind of things that Swedish museums have been discussing in debate, you know, since the uh, year 2000, when they had a conference here in Stockholm called um, Museums in the 21st Century. And uh, so it's been, you know, something very dear to the Swedish museum colleagues. I'm really happy to be back here because I've been here many times. And uh, I was here for an ICOM Nord meeting at one time and for the foundation conference for Asia Europe Museums Network, which afterwards, that was in 2000, then I launched the network in Barcelona as the, uh, in my capacity with the International Council of Museums. And I think that the Sweden has got this huge ability to challenge, but at the same time, I think Swedes are a little bit modest and humble, what they're doing, which is really good, good trait. Uh, but right now, my main, one of my main interests in Sweden is your new national film law uh, where gender mainstreaming or gender equity, yeah. uh, you call it gender equity, but that's only part of the game. Gender mainstreaming is the outcome of achieving gender equity. And the kind of reaction that you've got in Sweden, the kind of reaction you've got in the neighboring country where I live, in Denmark, uh, and especially the younger generation in Sweden, why is it that there's a certain amount of controversy about this or dissent? Have we actually engaged? How are we engaging with the next generation? We create, we use digital technologies to make it attractive for the younger generation. But to what extent does the younger generation actually help us to develop the content that is relevant to them where they can see their own first voice? And uh, so I think, uh, what, what's happening in Sweden is exciting and we all look forward to learning from it. And, and a quick hello to all my Swedish museum colleagues. I miss you all.